Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to join you, even if it is only by video link, to say a few words about your conference on the new technologies for borders, which I understand you're organizing in the framework of the ICAO trip strategy. For me, this is hugely important because it's one of the unique moments where you bring together people from governments, from industry, from international organizations, and from many different backgrounds, from border guards to passport producers to technicians. And I think what's great about this is you all have the same purpose. Everybody here today is trying to support ICAO and the TRIP strategy and to develop what I would describe as a comprehensive approach on the identification of travelers, learning from each other and working also on common ways to facilitate traveler identification in the future. Now, even though the Commission, uh, contrary perhaps to the member states, is only an observer status in uh, ICAO, we are very much interested in participating. And I think in many ways, this is one of the key areas of work for us. It's particularly important for us to have globally interoperable standards for travel documents in the world, which can be read and checked at all of our borders. And this is, again, one of the reasons why we had suggested holding this conference here in the headquarters of the European Border and Coast Guard Agency. I think it's also a particularly good context because only uh, just over two months ago, on the 12th of September, we presented a proposal to revamp further, strengthen further the European Border and Coast Guard Agency to equip it with up to 10,000 staff, also with executive powers to support the work of member states with the same responsibilities, obligations and duties as a member state border guard today. So I think one conclusion is probably in the future we're going to need more premises and it will not necessarily be this headquarters that will be able to host all of these staff. Now, I think in these challenging times, it is very, very important that we work together. Migrations in the headlines nearly every day. We're seeing many calls for stronger border controls, stronger identification mechanisms from all actors in many different spheres of life. And I think in this framework, Finding the right technological solutions, developing the new technologies is crucial for future border tasks. We can see one example of this with the automated border gates, but I think if you just take a step back, you look at the expected development in passenger volumes. IATA, for example, is forecasting 7.2 billion travelers by air in 2035. I think one thing is clear, we can't keep expanding the infrastructure space in airports we can't keep expanding waiting times. We need intelligent, advanced technological solutions that will allow us to reconcile our desire for mobility and our desire also to know that adequate security checks are being performed. I think this is the key question for the future. How do we see the border of the future? How do we find the right balance between high security and also the facilitation of travel? How can we ensure identification of travelers in a unique manner. Now, sometimes the airline industry and the World Travel and Tourism Council talk about seamless travel, facilitating travel through the airport by no longer needing to show boarding passes and booking confirmations. ICAO talks sometimes about digital credentials, which will electronically identify the traveler and facilitate control. We've got some projects underway in these areas where, for example, a passenger can register, enroll his or her biometric features, often the facial image, and can pass through the airport without queuing in long waiting lines. This facial image is often matched to the one that's stored in the passport and is linked to the booking, so we've no need for stops. Travel identification, therefore, uh, is important to ensure that we have a proper risk assessment of a traveller and that this can be applied throughout the entire traveller's journey. But we also see some other opinions in, in politics, some other voices calling rather for the opposite, uh, calling for a visa obligation to be widened, calling for more scrutiny, calling for this to be applied to each and every passenger entering a country in order to enhance security, in order to refuse the entry to those who don't have the right of admission. Now, there's no easy solution to this, but in my opinion, we need together to find the middle way. We need facilitation, but at the same time, we need to be able to maintain a high security level at our borders. Now, within the European Union, we have just reached an agreement between Council and Parliament on the introduction of an entry-exit system, 
and an electronic travel authorization system. I think you'll have an opportunity to hear from my colleagues more about this in the coming days. We've also completed work to upgrade the security of our own travel documents and introduced reinforced document inspection systems and passenger checks. This can provide security from both ends of the travel continuum. Now, for its part, ICAO has also been heavily engaged in this area. I know you've deployed very significant resources to drive forward several projects that aim at strengthening border control management. You've been organizing, for example, regional seminars with some of the key practitioners in the field. You've been providing dedicated technical assistance missions and high-level technical support to some of the key member states uh, and key partners in this area. One example alone being your ICAO Border Management Guide. However, and here I agree uh, very much with views that have been expressed by ICAO, if we want to plan for passenger facilitation and faster processing at the border, we have to start our collaborative work now bringing all the stakeholders together. And here I come back to the point I made at the beginning. I think border guards have a particularly important role to play in this process, as it's often up to the individual border guard to take a decision whether the person appearing in front of them is the one that is also showing up on the passport photo and matching the photo and data on the chip. They need to be well trained. They need to be able to apply swiftly, but with scrutiny, the new procedures at the border. And I think here the commitment of the border guard community, understanding their views, uh, having them on board is key to the development and deployment of new technology at the borders and for a revamped border control management that's designed to achieve the security and also the facilitation objectives throughout the entire journey of travellers and consistent with international standards. So I hope very much that today is not the end of this process, but it's the beginning. I wish you a fruitful conference with excellent results and let me reassure all of you that the Commission, the staff of DG Home, will be with you to continue to support you, continue to participate in such events and to reach the perfect result that manages to balance these objectives. Good luck for your work over the next few days and thank you very much.